In this video, we take a look at the common types of secondary storage, including magnetic, optical and solid state. The device that reads and writes data from secondary storage is generally referred to as the drive. What the data is actually stored on is referred to as the media. Let's start by looking at optical storage devices. So in the case of optical storage, we have an optical drive and a choice of media, which includes compact disc read only or CDR, compact disc read write or CDRW, digital versatile disc read only or DVDR, digital versatile disc read write or DVDRW, and Blu-ray, which was designed to supersede DVD and has the greatest storage capacity of all the ones mentioned. As a general rule, CDRs became popular for storing and distributing music, and CD read writes RWs as a backup option. DVDR became popular for storing motion pictures and movies, and DVDRW as a more useful backup option as it had greater storage than compact discs. With development of high definition motion pictures, greater storage was required, and Blu ray became popular as an alternative to the digital versatile disc. The field of music and film storage has seen many drives and media come and go over the years, but these are devices that have become most popular. All optical drives work by shining a laser at the media and processing the reflection from the media. In the case of read-only drives, so CDRs and DVDRs, the surface of the disc is physically burnt by the laser, creating what are known as pits and lands, suitable for storing zeros and ones. More accurately, it's the point where the pit starts or ends, which causes the laser light to scatter, and thus is not reflected as well. It's this change of reflective and non-reflective areas which is read and interpreted as the zeros and ones. Clearly, once the surface has been burnt, it cannot be changed, making the media read-only. It's possible to press optical discs many thousands of times, and it makes distribution very easy. For example, in the past when a popular artist released a new album, or a new film became available for home viewing, the demand was likely to be high. In the case of writable drives, CDRWs and DVDRWs, the chemical composition of the disc is changed by a reversible chemical reaction. This means the data can be written many times. There are many positives as opticals of storage media, including being cheap to produce, lightweight and highly portable. DVDs store more data than CDs because the pits and lands are smaller and closer together as the laser technology has increased the precision. Data is read and written from the inside of the disc to the outside in a spiral. This can make them slow devices for accessing data. An optical media is also prone to scratches. Let's now have a look at magnetic media. Most hard disks in typical computer systems use magnetic disks. Imagine a typical magnet. It has a north or south polarity. This is ideal for storing zeros and ones. Over the years, the technology has been refined significantly to pack an ever increasing number of magnetized compounds in the same space. As a result, magnetic hard disks today have an extremely high capacity. Hard disks have a drive head that has to physically move over the surface of the disk. This is the clicking sound you can hear from your computer. The drive head makes the drive a little slower than drives with no moving parts. And because this is a mechanical component, it will eventually fail. 
Tapes have also been popular magnetic devices in the past. They used to be considered extremely large in capacity and therefore were ideal for backups. Due to their small size and portability, keeping an off-site backup was easy with magnetic tapes. Unfortunately, because they can only be read and written sequentially from start to finish, this impacted significantly on how data could be stored on these devices. They are extremely slow in comparison to alternatives. They have been largely superseded by portable hard disks and cloud storage. Solid state drives are gaining in popularity, being small, lightweight and very quick to access data. They also operate without noise. There are many different types of solid state storage and they're beginning to replace hard disks as their capacity increases and their cost decreases. Solid state drives work by a flow of electricity forcing electrons into floating gates between two oxide layers. This causes a change in the charge in the floating gate and this can be measured as a zero or a one. Over time, the oxide layers deteriorate, meaning that eventually the transfer of electrons will become unreliable. This means that solid state media has a limited number of read-write cycles and therefore a limited lifespan. As well as being able to understand and discuss various types of storage, it's important also to be able to justify what type of storage you would use for a given application, situation or scenario. So let's have a look at a few scenarios now. Let's now take a look at a range of devices and storage scenarios. So here we have a helmet mounted camera. In terms of capacity, we want to be able to store video footage. We want to be able to quickly get the data on and off the media, and it needs to be stored quickly as we'll be capturing real time video footage. The device needs to be portable and it needs to be durable as it will potentially receive lots of knocks and bumps. It needs to be fairly reliable, but we appreciate that over time we'll need to replace it. Given all the options, the best fit here would be a solid state drive. In the scenario of a desktop computer in an office, we have a need for high storage data capacity, as we'll have lots of programs and user data. We need to be able to access these programs and the data reasonably quickly, but portability is less of a concern, as is durability, as the computer is going to be in one fixed place on the office desk and isn't going to be moved around very often. It needs to be fairly reliable and the cost needs to be quite low byte for byte because of the significant data storage requirements. Therefore, the best fit here is magnetic media for the main hard disk. But we could also consider installing a smaller solid state drive just to make the computer a little faster when accessing the operating system. In terms of distributing a video game for consoles, we have a number of options here. We could use optical media because the capacity is reasonably small, though this is certainly changing with some modern graphic intensive games. It doesn't need to be very fast because the consoles will typically install the software off the optical device onto their own hard drive. It does need to be portable as you're likely to buy the game from a shop or order it and have it delivered. And it needs to be fairly durable and reliable, but not overly as once you have it installed, there won't be much regular further use for the physical optical disc. You'll also want to keep the cost down. All of these factors make optical media an excellent choice here. On a DVD, you'll get 4.7 gigabyte of available storage, and this should be sufficient for your average compressed game. Another option, and again increasingly common, is to use cloud-based storage and to have the game streamed and downloaded directly to your console's hard drive after you've purchased them from an online store. Finally, let's consider listening to music on a portable music player. Here, we've got sound files, which are not that large. We do need the device to be portable. We need to be able to access the files quickly. 
and we need to have the device being durable, reliable and ideally low cost. So here the best option is probably solid state storage. Although it's more expensive byte for byte than magnetic, it wouldn't be significantly expensive given the amount of storage we will want. The requirements for portability, reliability and durability outweigh all the other considerations in this scenario. So that's everything you need to know for your exam. Pause the video and take some notes. Thank you.